Hi, thanks for coming. In this video, I'm going to derive the formula for the period of oscillation for a spring mass system. So we start with, with a spring at its natural length. And let's say we load it with a mass. And as a result, it finds its equilibrium position when the spring is stretched by an extension of, say, E. So at the equilibrium position, which is here, the spring is stretched with an extension of E. Since it comes to an equilibrium, it, this must mean that the downward weight of the mass must be exactly balanced by the upward tension in the spring. So we can write that since the net force is zero uh, at the equilibrium position, we know that mg is exactly equals to the tension, which I can write as k times e. OK, let's move on. Let's say we now st um, stretch the spring even further, meaning like I come along and I pull the spring down, say, to an extension, uh, extension of further extension of x0. And if I let go, this is going to go into oscillation uh, with an amplitude of x0. That means it's going to oscillate uh, between x0 below and x0 above the equilibrium position. But let's say that I'm interested in at one particular displacement. Let's say at displacement um, x. At this displacement, the weight is still going to be mg, but the spring is actually more stretched compared to when it was at the equilibrium position. And so the tension is going to be larger. Right? So let's apply Newton's second law at a displacement of x. So I'm going to take downward as my positive direction. So I'm going to take the downward weight minus away the upward tension. And this is the net force, right? So Newton's second law says that I can equate the net force to the mass times the mass's um, acceleration. Next, I'm going to write P as k times the extension. Now, when it's displaced downward, the extens extension is actually larger than e. Uh, it's exactly e times x, actually. Now, look at mg minus ke. mg minus ke is 0, right? Because we know from here, mg is k times e. So mg minus k is 0, leaving us with simply negative kx is equals to m times a. Rearrange this equation, you get acceleration to be equals to negative k over m uh, times x. Aha! We know that for an SHM, uh, a must be equal to negative omega square x, where omega square is a constant. So we have here a is equals to negative k over m x. k over m is a constant for a particular spring mass system. So this tells us that a spring mass system is indeed an SHM. Actually, in hindsight, the, this, this fact is quite obvious because the, in a spring mass system, the mass is subjected to only two forces, the weight and the tension. And the weight is constant, right, at whatever displacement. Whereas the tension is larger when it's below the equilibrium position and smaller when it's above the equilibrium position. And we know that the spring force varies linearly with distance. So graphically, the tension force will look like this. So I'm sketching the graphs for the different forces against uh, displacement. So when you are displaced below the equilibrium position, you have the tension larger than the weight, giving you an upward net force, which provides you with the restoring force that tries to accelerate you back towards the equilibrium position. On the other hand, if you are above the equilibrium position, uh, because the spring is less stretched, the tension is actually smaller than the downward weight, giving you a net downward force that, again, provides you with the required 
restoring force to accelerate you back towards the equilibrium position. And because the tension varies linearly with distance, the net force experienced by the mass will be directly proportional to the displacement. So actually, it's clear right from the start that uh, for a spring mass system, the net force is going to be directly proportional to the displacement and always directed towards the equilibrium position. But let's go further. So now that we know for a spring mass system A is equal to negative K over Mx, we can actually, by simple pattern matching, uh, realize that omega square is equal to K over M. And since omega is 2 pi F, we know now that frequency of a spring mass system is given by 1 over 2 pi square roots of k over m. Okay, that's all. Ta-ta!